Alright guys, today is going to be the first video that I have filmed. I don't know if it's going to be the first video uploaded, but it's the first video filmed with the Springfield Waypoint 2020. This is really um, a new rifle to me. I've shot it just a little bit so far. I say a little bit and I've got a half empty box of ammo here, like 100 rounds. But the point is, this is going to be the first real test I've done on it. I've done some, <clears throat> some pressure testing and kind of just like trying to break the gun in or, you know, foul up the barrel a little bit. But... I haven't exactly done any real load development. So that's gonna be the first bit of what we do today. Um, I did shoot this gun a little bit with these bullets already and kinda had some poor results. I was shooting it on a hot day with some, some pretty warm loads and uh, was figuring out where the pressure was at. Accuracy wasn't very good. Um, the loads that we're gonna be using today is Peterson Large Rifle Brass. Federal Gold Medal Match Large Rifle Primers. These are Burger 140 Grain Elite Hunter Bullets, and we're using H4350 powder, of course. So, um, today we're just shooting 40 grains of that powder. Um, it's a, it, you know, medium charge, and we're really just testing the seating depth. So today, the main goal here is to see if we see any big accuracy changes with the variance in the seating depth that we're gonna be doing. We've got, I already shot five shots on paper. Um, my target camera, with my luck, will probably die long before this video is even over, so I might just have to show you all a picture at the end. We will see, but the point is, um, I've seen really big shifts in group size with VLD style bullets. These are a hybrid bullet, so it's kind of in between, but <clears throat> with this particular bullet in the past when I have shot it through certain guns, I have seen very large groups and then very small groups with the same bullet same powder and everything, just uh, small variances in the seating depth of that bullet. So that's the main goal today. We're going to test technically 11. I already shot five on paper, but we have 10 more that we will film. Uh, groups on paper, they're going to be three shot groups. And we're just going to see if we see some big groups turn into small groups. They're going to be roughly 10 thousandths variant or uh, increments in change as we're going deeper into the magazine starting at magazine length so this is about 2.250 base to ogive length right now and the jam in this gun where the bullet jams into the rifling is at about 2.286 so we're about 36 thousandths off the lands which is safe with a like i said medium charge of age 4350 but I can't see them any longer and run these out of a mag. So this is where we're starting and we're gonna work our way back in 10 thousandths increments. Now that I have talked your ear off, we are going to shoot some groups and see what we get. I'm gonna try to do this relatively slow. So like I said, target camera will probably die, um, but I wanna make sure the barrel stays pretty cool because this is not gonna be a gun that I'm gonna be shooting long strings of fire with in the field. So let's go ahead and get started here. I've got the chronograph set up. Um, I was seeing about 2,600 feet per second, which isn't exactly fast but um, this is a shorter barrel. So I'm not expecting to get super high velocities out of this thing, but if we can get a hunting load at about 2,700 feet per second with good accuracy, I will be really happy. So let's see what we can get here. Oh, if I can get the feed, that'd be a good start. All right. <clears throat> in the same holes always nice to see but will we get three probably not that's well, simply not bad that's a lot better than what I've seen up to this point so already uh, an improvement but not that it'll be consistent but we'll uh Go ahead and use our little rifle cool here from Magneto Speed. I don't know if these are really even all that effective, if I'm being totally honest, but um, it ain't gonna hurt anything in terms of getting this to cool down just a little bit quicker because when you run a suppressor, it uh, it gets hot like really fast and really hot, but it's not real bad today. It's like maybe 60 to 62 degrees, so it's decent temperature, but um, this, this thing speeds things up, I think, a little bit, but it's it's extremely annoying. So, not a fan of the, the annoyance, but it, you know, it helps. All right, we're gonna move on to our next group here. This is gonna be 2.230, based to OJAV length, if I'm remembering correctly. 
line up with point of aim on that one. I just, that blows my mind. <clears throat> you change 10 thousandths in your seating depth, right? That's all you do. Same powder charge, same, same exact load, same brass, same powder, same bullet, everything. You seat that sucker a little bit deeper, and I mean a little bit. Now, we're going in 10 thousandths increments, but it doesn't have to be done in 10 thousandths increments. Uh, a lot of people will do a lot shorter increments than that, but you can burn through components really fast and sequentially, or uh, I'm sorry, consequently burn out barrels very fast, but <clears throat> you move that sucker just a little bit and your accuracy completely changes. Now I know we're only doing three shots, so some people are like, oh, you're not shooting a five shot group. I don't care. <laughs> I'm working with what I got and um, components are kind of hard to get right now, so. Anyway, I think that uh, two groups in a row are showing much more promise than what everything else I've shot so far up to this point on paper have. So um, I'm happy. The velocity is definitely not as high as I want it to be in terms of what I would hope to work up to in a final load for hunting. I would like to get a little more speed out of these because I I know that um, these these perform very well on some of the deer that we've shot with them um, at higher velocities. You know that means it's going to expand farther away in terms of if you're shooting out to 600 yards and you start at a higher velocity you're gonna have better luck with the bullet doing its job at a longer distance because they need a certain velocity usually a lot of people say around 2,000 feet per second I'm not I'm not gonna get too deep into this but um, basically I'm not necessarily looking for like a 300 wind mag to kill a deer at 100 yards I'm just saying if I do happen to shoot a deer this year which hopefully will get some more long-range hunting footage um, Starting at a higher velocity is going to help you out with the bullet performing the way it's intended to at distance. So anyway, we're going to let this thing cool down for a little bit again, um, turn off the camera for a minute, reset the chrono, and then we're going to keep going. The velocities have been pretty consistent. Uh, this one was an extreme spread of 22 feet per second and a standard deviation of 9. The last group, I believe, was a little bit tighter, um, but not by a big difference. And I think the first group was like an 11 feet per second standard devi deviation. And that was the five shot group, if I'm remembering right. So anyway, um, so far, so good. I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm go ahead and get everything set back up. We'll keep going. I said I was going to go through this pretty slow. I am um, hustling a little more than I would like to, simply because I'm sure the GoPro is probably going to die before this is over. So I'll try to get as many of these groups on camera as I can. Um, but I am still trying to make an effort to give the barrel a little bit of a chance to cool off before we... <clears throat> just race through this so the next group should be with 2.230 inch BTO or base to ogive measurement so <clears throat> that puts us at about 50 th 56 thousandths off of the land if I'm doing my math right or off of jam I should say that's important up on this one. Yeah, that one definitely opened up, which for most hunting scenarios, I wouldn't call that a, a bad group necessarily, but with everything we're using right now, that's a bad group. I want, I want much better than that out of this rifle with these components because I think it's proved that it, it's capable right so <clears throat> velocities on that were ex insanely tight um, extreme spread of two feet per second with a standard deviation of one feet per second that's decent so um, doesn't get much better than that in terms of a velocity spread so go ahead and stick the cooler back in there I might go shut off the target camera just for a minute 
and give this a little bit longer to cool down just in case and then uh, we'll turn everything back on keep going all right just got done with a little break now we're moving on with our test pretty sure i completely forgot where we we're at but i think it was 2.210 base toe jive you can make fun of me in the comments if i'm wrong but anyway we're moving on to the next seating depth here and gun should be completely cooled off so we we might basically be back to cold more at this point but that's all right we're gonna probably aim for the left corner on that diamond and just start shooting Apparently it looks like a <clears throat> pretty good group. Can't tell exactly where that last shot was. I think it was kind of on the bottom right. But one of the reasons I was I was so adamant about letting this gun cool off actually here just a minute ago was because the suppressor mirage sucks. <laughs> so when your target gets to doing this number in the scope, it's um Time to let the gun cool off. It's kind of hard to hard to shoot small groups when your your target looks like flowing water. So that one had pretty good velocity, 16 feet per second extreme spread and seven feet per second standard deviation. So throughout this entire test, we've had good um, consistency with the velocity. I'm not saying like real high velocities, but we've definitely had the consistency, which is in my mind at this point much more important. Um, if I can get good precision out of the loads, they're they're grouping good on paper, and the velocities are consistent and tight, then uh, that's an excellent starting point. It's looking so far like the bullets can definitely shoot. We know that they're they're more than capable of great accuracy. So we're gonna keep shooting through this whole test. Um, take a look at the results when we're done. I'm not a perfect shooter, guys. Like I can shoot tight groups, but I can't shoot a quarter inch group every time you know with a gun that's capable every gun that I have can shoot better than I can that's the best way I can put it um, I pull shots you know I I miss <laughs> it happens like I'm not one of those guys that pretends that I hit everything I always aim at but um, you know the gun always hits what it's aiming at that's that's a plus but uh, anyway we're gonna go ahead and keep rolling through this I'm, I'm definitely loving what I'm seeing I know that this gun is is capable I like the gun so far I'm, I'm very pleased with it and I'm liking the the load so far. So we're gonna we're gonna let the gun cool down a little bit. We're gonna keep going. All right. So that last group was good. <clears throat> we're now at two thousand. Or I'm sorry, two inches basically. Based O jive. So we've got this mag. One, two, three, four, five more groups left after this. Probably won't see them all, but <laughs> that's what we got left to shoot. I just noticed a minute ago that that bottom left diamond is actually torn. I don't know if I punch through it when I was setting up the target or what but we might just avoid shooting that all together because um, I don't want it to make it difficult to read the groups when we're done or anything That's a good group, but it didn't pick up that last velocity, so I don't know what that all three were, but at least it got the, the first two. I, it looks like my chronograph might actually have moved. I don't know if I did that when I turned it back on. But <clears throat> anyway, uh, 2604 on the first shot and 2622 on the second. Did not get the last reading. I will probably readjust the chronograph here in just a second, hoping that that kind of corrects that little issue. I don't know. I must have just bumped it, but anyway, same deal. Cool the gun off. Keep shooting. All right, we should be at 1.990 inch measurement from 
base to ogive. For those of you that don't know what the ogive is, it's better to read about it in a loading manual because it'll explain it more better. <laughs> they will, they'll, it will have a more accurate description of what it is. But basically, we're not measuring from the base of the the head stamp. The you know the I'm having a really hard time with words today. <clears throat> the bottom of the shell casing up to the tip of the bullet. Just trying to keep it in layman's terms. Um, we're not measuring from the case head all the way to the tip. We're measuring from the case head, so the bottom of the, the casing, to a point on the bullet where we can get a more accurate measurement because the tip has typically a pretty big variance in the, in the measurement from the entire length of the bullet. So when you measure from the base of the case to the ogive of the bullet, it's more consistent. That's why I keep saying base to ogive and not overall length. So anyway, we are moving forward. This is going to be 1.990 inches. As long as I'm staying on track here, you guys need to keep an eye on me. It almost kind of looks like it's going to storm. I may have pulled that one. That could have been on me. I kind of felt myself shift the gun to the left a little bit. Yeah, I think that, that second shot very well could have been me. I, I was not confident on that shot. Um, velocity still tight. Uh, staying within 10 feet per second on the standard deviation. 24 feet per second on the extreme spread. We, we saw some tighter ones. Um, I think the, the biggest we saw was like 11 uh, on the ex um, standard deviation. So still good. Um, same deal. Let the gun cool. Keep going. Okay, we got four more, including what's in the mag here. This should be 1.1980 inch base to ojav. And we have three more. So far the chronograph is reading good so I'm not gonna mess with it so unfortunately the GoPro died and it does not have replaceable batteries unfortunately so I I'm not gonna take time to go back and charge it I don't think I have that much time today but um, I've only got three groups left. We've definitely seen what we need to see. I'm gonna go ahead and still shoot the rest of these and I'll probably try to post a picture at least or, or update the, you know, on the video what the, the final target looked like. If I forget to do that, I'm sorry. But um, you've already seen the important stuff. You know this thing, uh, these can shoot. You know that this gun can shoot. The load's looking good. We're definitely gonna work on it more. This isn't the end. Um, this just gives us a very good starting point. I will have a box full of brass here that we can rework and cater specifically to this gun. Probably bump the shoulder back like two thousandths and then uh, go ahead and have them all fire formed, ready to go for this gun. We're going to shoot the rest of these groups. I'll try to show you guys a picture, but again, um, for all intents and purposes, this is probably the end of this video. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Always appreciate the support um, in whatever fashion that looks like. If you guys haven't seen the website or some of the other social media platforms that we're on at this point, please go check those out. We're on Facebook, Instagram, um, risencitizen.com is our website. And of course we are filming these videos to upload to YouTube. At some point we're probably gonna be uploading footage to other platforms as well. Um, YouTube has been pretty unkind to gun channels in the past, so hopefully um, they let us stay on there because I know there's still gonna be a lot of YouTube users that continue to want to watch things like this. So <clears throat> if you got anything out of this video, please let me know. I always appreciate good feedback. Um, and if you have, you know, criticisms, that's that's always appreciated too. Like anything I can do to make these better because we're really just winging it. We're trying to, you know, I am learning what I can find out from my capabilities, but at the same time, if it benefits you guys with knowledge that I'm simply passing along, then it makes it 100% worth it. And it's always nice to hear that. So. Anyway, if I can do anything to make these videos better, by all means let me know. If you like what you see, definitely drop a comment or whatever. <laughs> you know, depending on what platform you're on, there might not be the ability to leave a comment. So, all said and done, 
you guys take care stay risen be good um if you got anything let me know let me know and we'll uh we'll go from there so shoot the rest of these hopefully continue to have some nice weather and enjoy the rest of the day